All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's uh, February 27th for the technology meeting. It's 5.30. We'll go ahead and start by introducing ourselves. Kevin Strobel. Scott Matt. <clears throat> Um, the first one would be equipment replacements. All right. Uh, basically the same line items that we've been discussing for the last uh, two or three months. So one of them coming to the conclusion this evening, and that is our K-8 iPad. So that is on the voting meeting agenda for approval this evening and pending that uh, board action tonight. Uh, we're expecting the iPads to ship relatively quickly, uh, within about a week, so we should have those in early March. Uh, the cases will be following there behind. We should have those by mid-March. Uh, so looking at our deployment strategy, we should be able to start working on that uh, mid-March through, uh, right before Easter, uh, potentially a week after Easter is our time to be wrapped up. Um, so we will have the kids' iPads swapped out prior to summer, uh, and that was one of our primary goals, just because the district has become uh, so active with uh, academics of the summer, particularly with our summer academic connections, obviously traditional summer school. Uh, so we'll have all that wrapped up uh, before we go for the school year, and the kids can then retain those devices over the summer for that program. So they, they should order and ship by next week? Correct, they? correct. And then um, the swap out in May? Uh, by the end of March, early April. Oh, okay. So we would like to have the entire swap. Uh, it's our intention to have that wrapped up <coughs> by Easter break, you know, plus or minus a, a day on the other <coughs> side of it. And then... Um, one last question, and it's just a, it's a Mac question. I know that there's the ability to keep files on there. You mm -hmm. can save documents. Correct. Do they all transfer? Yep. So we, so we uh, do user. utilize iCloud for all uh, of our students, so they do backup. So okay. uh, leading up to this, they will run a backup, and then when they get the new device, they will store it back down. Um, definitely at the middle school, that becomes a thing at, at that age level. At elementary level, we don't see it used quite as much, but <clears throat> we'll still leverage that ability. Okay. Any, any questions? Any last questions on that one? I guess not. All right. Uh, uh, website our, community? Yep, I'm going to do one more thing under the uh, equipment replacement. Okay. That's just uh, touching on our interactive whiteboard. So uh, we have evaluated two more vendors since we last spoke. Uh, so that brings us to a total of five vendors that we've had in-person evaluations with. Uh, we did look at other boards, but we didn't take it to the point of actually evaluating the product in, in person. So uh, at this point, we're not learning anything new. We're not seeing anything new. So uh, at, we're going to keep it at that five vendor and start whittling it down now to our top uh, two or three, start doing price negotiations, that sort of thing. Um, actually, one of the boards, uh, this is Owens, is going to be utilizing later. It's actually right over there. You can see an example of one. And it, it does look like you know, literally a big TV uh, that you can touch. Um, we uh, had our opportunities for the faculty to engage in January. We're going to have additional opportunities during our March 13th in-service. Uh, so that is just one of the vendors coming out and demoing the concepts of interactive whiteboards and obviously uh, features specific to uh, the whiteboard itself and just gives people a chance to get some hands-on activity with it as well. So we'll continue <coughs> moving forward, gathering feedback on that front. But you um, already did, um, if I'm not mistaken, you already had a day or two in each... Yes, yep, correct. So back in January, uh, we had a vendor on site for two days. That was during the school day, so people came um, <clears throat> either during free period or if they had class coverage uh, in the intermediate center in the high school. It was before or after school, so people had more availability. Uh, we also had time in uh, November. That was more of a select invite-only group that we used uh, just to really validate our initial uh, pursuit of this endeavor, just to validate that you know, what we thought was a good, good idea was. Uh, so this March 13th in-service should allow anyone who hasn't been able to engage over the last couple of months that opportunity if they so desire. It's a, uh, it's a volunteer opt-in uh, session for them to attend. Second demo. Yeah. So our, Great. Uh, once we have you know, that next round of feedback, then we'll start moving forward with uh, recommendations, looking at vendors, that sort of thing here as we, as we approach April. Any questions on the whiteboard? <laughs> Oh, all right. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> Under project updates, uh, touch base on our website training. So that continues to move forward. Uh, we've basically wrapped up the the website itself training. So managing content and that sort of thing. Uh, right now, the migration is in process. Aptigy is actually handling that. That was um, an awesome benefit that they're moving the content over for us. We're not sitting there doing copy paste, copy paste. 
Uh, we are going to be starting the alert side of the training in What's March. What's the company again? Aptigy. A-P-P-T-E-G-Y. A-P-T? A-P-P-T-E-G-Y. Yeah, I don't actually have to spell one here. That's fine. Yep. Um, so we'll start the alert training in March. So that's going to be um, how to send email alerts, how to send phone calls, uh, how to send push notifications to the app. Uh, that will be initially with Mr. Flowers and myself. And then as we get closer to the end of the year, we will bring in uh, the principals and building building liaisons, that sort of thing, that send messages out as well as the department heads. Uh, we'll do a large group uh, training on that front. We've narrowed our launch date to early June. Basically, uh, it's our intent to do this right after the kids leave. We don't necessarily want to change the interface at the end of the school year, but once the students leave, we should be in decent shape to do our cutover uh, well ahead of our June 30 expiration date with uh, Blackboard, our current provider. So overall, uh, that project's moving along well. We're at the point now we'll start working on design elements and that sort of thing, so we may have some uh, initial uh, layouts that we can show you as they actually migrate our content over. We have made the connections already for things like calendar and that sort of thing. I touched on that last month, but now we'll actually have real content visible on, on the site. And last but not least is a drop-in under project updates. This is uh, something really it's kind of come to... Uh, discussion over the last week. So this year we did a uh, migration to IU13, the Lancaster Lebanon IU for our internet connection here at the high school and that allowed us to get the additional capacity and as well as avoid a firewall replacement. We have our second connection over at the middle school, that's with a separate vendor, and that is one year left on that agreement. Uh, however, I in touch with Lancaster Lebanon, I had asked them just to generate some budgetary pricing so we could get a feel for what we want to do with that when that contract comes due at the end of next school year. They inadvertently listed the startup time for this summer, July 1st of 2023, not July 2024. So uh, pricing that came back ended up being awesome. Um, on that's for the end. middle school? Yeah, that's for the middle school. So we currently have a one gig connection. Uh, this was to bring it in line like our high school connection at 10 gigs, so 10 times the speed. And the pricing that came back ended up being only $150 more a month uh, for 10 gigs versus one gig connection if we hop on uh, through the WAN. That was, uh, like I said, that, that was quite surprising. It would be with the same vendor that we're using currently, which is Penn Teladata. Uh, the difference is our connection would be routing back through IU13 rather than through one of Penn Teladata's uh, data centers. Uh, I make note that it would still be through Penn Teladata because we <coughs> have that second connection for two reasons. One is capacity, the other is resiliency. <coughs> we don't want to use two providers because then uh, when a rodent decides to wake us up in the middle of the night because it chewed through fiber, we have a fallback connection uh, because it's going through a separate uh, provider yet. So this connection would route through Ephrata, our current connection here at the high school routes through Reading. Uh, that $150 a month increase uh, will be made up uh, substantially by, again, here at the same thing at the high school, we will not have to replace our firewall, which is typically about $20,000 expense. So that $150 a month increase in a service charge is made up for in avoidance of our hardware uh, costs. So we're, we're still in discussions with them to make sure you know this is all going to work, but I wanted to just give a heads up because that was not something on our radar. It was coming on our radar for next year and just... Uh, and they need to they need to keep that equipment upgraded, not us. That's correct. They need that's to make correct. sure the software is updated, not us. That's so correct. There's also manpower involved. That's yes, correct. So those, yes, those okay. you know, quote unquote, uh, you know, hitting costs that are not I, seeing I on paper. To, or, I do have to ask the question. I mean, a gig, yes, is and it's expandable by users. Yeah. Um, so it's not so everybody gets a gig up to, up to a gig. That's yeah. screaming fast. Why do we need ten? So we regularly, actually, as a district, uh, so we have our 10 gig connection, we have our 1 gig connection. Most of our traffic routes out through um, our high school connection. Earlier this year, we hit 7, 8 gigs just when app updates are coming out. Um, as a district, we, we do uh, routinely exceed 1 gig in connection because it's 1 gig total for all 3,700 users. Okay. You may get 1 gig of speed oh, wow. at your within the district, but as far as throughput out to the internet, that would be 1 gig total throughput out to the internet, so that's why we have the I 10 gig. I didn't realize so, it was total. Yeah, correct. So yeah, within the district, you know, our two laptops, you're, you're correct as far as that one gig. Right. It's when you go out to the internet, yet yeah, we still have another throughput that we have to maintain. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
Great. So. That's that's good news. That's, that's actually saving us money long term. It, yes, in long. Yes, correct. Correct. Better, absolutely. Better for less. For better, and it, and it saves us money. Correct. Yeah, and we've been able to leverage through our high school connection. One of the primary reasons that is our primary is <coughs> just the type of firewall because you know commodity. They can firewalls are expensive. Exactly. That's, that's an annual expense. So that's twenty thousand dollars. Correct. And as a uh, you know consortium, Quick. they're serving many districts. They right. can get a more powerful set yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. Uh, so I will continue to report back on that again. That just came back. So our, our line item goes up by 150, but our expense lines goes way down because you don't yes. have all the manpower and equipment. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. The, the equipment will be a <coughs> real right. you know, solid number you can actually see on paper. Awesome. So, um, Any other? Beyond that? Any other questions? Any other questions? I think that about wraps it up. That concludes our meeting, technology meeting.